Hello, today we are going to talk about how to determine which DLLs are required by an executable file, an .exe file in Windows operating system. The newest application which helps us is dependencies.exe as this uh, GitHub project, so github.com slash lucas g slash dependencies. It says that it's a rewrite using .NET framework of the dependency walker, the executable depends.exe that was part of the Windows Software Development Kits with the last version being version 2.2 .2, which added support for MSDN style external help and HTML help system. We look at both these tools, so dependency walker 2.2, also known as depends.exe and dependencies.exe. Let's first see the original tool which is uh, dependency viewer depends dependency walker depends.exe was part of visual studio is part of windows driver kit version 10 does not really support uh, windows api sets which have been part of um, the Windows versions starting with Windows 7. Let's install them. So dependency walker first. This uh, is a Windows machine. Let's see if it's 64-bit or 32-bit operating system. So it's Windows 11 64-bit dependency walker where can we download it for um, x64 okay let's see how we install this application does it need a microsoft visual c++ redist does it need any other dependencies? Depends is a zip file. Let's see if it runs. Okay. Let's see if it can see which DLLs are needed by the executable depends.exe. Okay, so this took two minutes while the application was not responding. And now it says that it has detected errors Let's close this message box. So the application is split into three parts, the graphical user interface window. You can resize them freely. You have a um, tree view with um, the executable and all of the DLLs that are loaded by that executable or needed by that executable. In the right hand side, after you select one of the executables, let's say um, that you want ADV API 32 DLL, it says that ADV API 32.dll, this is the tool window for exports. These are the symbols or so primary the functions exported by this executable adv api dot thirty two dll so it exports you know a thousand functions 
all of the exported functions have a um, integer ordinal. You can export symbols using def files by specifying the ordinal when you build using Microsoft Visual C++. You can export symbols without names. The vast majority of symbols exported from Windows API DLLs actually have names. Okay, you can see this uh, split, all of the Win32 API functions that do not receive as parameter do not re or do not return strings will have just one version such as access the access check um, function whereas the functions that um, use um, arguments or parameters of type string such as uh, zero terminated a array of um, one byte chars or two byte white chars those have a twin a pair of functions the function with a at the end and the function with w at the end okay so access uh, check and audit alarm a and access check and audit alarm w so this one is for one byte uh, char type C type um, strings so lp c str and this is for array of um, wrt which is lp c w str the windows c type for strings okay this doesn't have strings in the arguments these two do have etc okay these are not actually dls that are missing this is a new feature in windows 7 and up which is called api sets which is not that well supported by this um, application and some other applications but uh, this is just a benign thing should be i don't know an information or something okay so please disregard all of the errors in this tool window that uh, are about api minus ms dlls and ext minus ms minus okay so the only things uh, dlls that are presented as errors could not find or open the file which are not um, api sets are these four ie shims which is in, I don't know, internet explorer shims PDM utilities, HSV, iFile Trust, and WPAX holder. In this tool window, we can see the functions that are exported by this DLL, ADV API 32.dll, but also imported into the executable depends.exe or another DLL that's um, needed by depends.exe. So these are the 1000 symbols and functions exported by the DLL with the letter E. And this um, tool window contains the symbols that were exported from the DLL, but then imported into the executable or other DLLs. So we have um, the registry windows registry functions reg close reg open reg query reg set reg enum they're only in the 
ASCII, so the one byte version used, which means that the executable depends.exe is a 64 bit executable, says in here 64. But then it does not um, define the Win32, C++, macros, Unicode, and underscore Unicode, such that um, when it's using the C++ Windows header files, so the .h files, and uh, depends on text I uses the function rec delete key, then in fact the function reg delete key A will be used, not reg delete key W. Okay. Let's sort ascending by function and find all of these functions, all of the imported functions from the exported functions. So should be get username A, get username A, this one. So the function with ordinal 1359 is exported by this DLL and imported from this DLL into this executable. Okay, the same for the reg close. So I click on one of these cells and then I write at the keyboard the name of the exported symbol. So I wrote a reg close key, found it in here at ordinal 1594. And now I'm searching for reg delete key A. Found it at ordinal 1607. So we want to use uh, dependency walker for the following uses. We have an executable. Maybe it needs transitively 20 DLLs and two are missing. The executable fails to start. Why is that? We are going to open the executable in dependency walker. It's going to give us errors in here and then errors in here and in here in this tree view. So in the tree view, we can collapse all of the elements. Hopefully we can collapse. Because the API sets, maybe this tree view is not virtual and there's hundreds of API sets and they're recursively needing one each other. So that's why this uh, tree view is struggling. But all of the all of the API sets should in fact, I don't know, not be shown at all. It just makes navigating everything uh, slower. You can see how the tree view is struggling here in the scroll bar. Okay. The next thing that we want to do is to see, okay, our executable has managed to load some DLLs, but from which directory? From C column backslash windows backslash system32, from the uh, side by side for WO6432, so maybe our process is 32 bit and the operating system is 64 bit so it will load DLRs from C column backslash windows backslash syswo directory which is which this one syswo64 windows on windows 64 for that we can make it show full paths for the DLS. It's going to show full paths both in the tree view and in uh, this tool window. Okay, then for DLS we have uh, 
this subsystem, which is not that important. In Windows, there's two main subsystems when you build C++ executables. There's the GUI subsystem and the console subsystem. There's versioning. Okay, so this is the order. We open an executable in uh, dependency worker depends.exe. We're looking for errors, but again, we need to discern that the application is very old, doesn't support um, that well or at all the API sets. So we need to take with a grain of salt everything that's shown about DLRs with a name starting with API minus MS minus and um, ext minus ms minus. Then it's showing all sorts of false positives, all sorts of errors which are not really errors, because in uh, Windows there's many ways of loading a DLL from an executable or needing a DLL from an executable. There's at least these ways of doing it. So implicit um, dependencies is when inside of your executable you're going to say or the linker is going to say that at um, load time when the executable is going to be loaded the following DLS will be needed to exist and be loadable and the following symbols will be imported from these DLLs. Then there's um, the um, runtime loading of DLLs which is done using the Win32 API functions, load library, and get proc address. And then there's forwarded, delay loaded, and injected types of um, DLLs that are needed by an executable or by another DLL. You will need to know a bit about the Win. 32 API DLLs and what functions are exported from those. For instance, from what I know, ComCTL32 is for uh, the, um, no, the theming that was uh, introduced in Windows XP. Shell32 is uh, com style exports, so classes, co classes ex interfaces exported using the COM mechanism, which allow the current user to interact with, e with what would be the Linux desktop environment, but we're in Windows, so this is the shell, the start menu, the panel, the Windows Explorer, the desktop, file open dialog, file save as dialog. Okay, MSVCRT, this is the Microsoft Visual C runtime. So this is similar to the Linux glibc. MFC 42 C++ um, API that's uh, built on top of the Win32 API. All of the Win, most 99% of the Win32 API is exported as external C, so C programming language style exports from the LLs, whereas um, MFC 42 is C++ symbols exported from this DLL. So there's um, the 
class CString, which sits on top of LPC STR, LPC WSTR. There's a class C file, C whatever, prefix C. So it's like a toolkit that provides better ergonomics on top of the Win32 API, MFC Microsoft Foundation classes. GDI32, this is low level painting with uh, fonts and angles and arcs and brushes. Okay. These SH uh, symbols are for the Windows shell, so for the Windows graphical user interface. In ComCTL32, the exported symbols, there's MRU most recently used. The um, getting version info block out of a portable executable file. image list and uh, toolbars, up down control, property sheets. Okay. Common Dialog 32, the color picker, the font picker, these are um, pop um, model dialogs. Open file dialog, print dialog, print page setup dialog. So the C library for Windows, the closest similar to the GNU C library in Linux is MF, uh, MS VCRT, Microsoft Visual C++ Runtime or C Runtime. There's um, C++ style exports. So these are not external C. And we have context menu to undecorate C++ functions. This is uh, the way the, the names of C++ symbols look like when they are exported from DLLs. They are mangled C++ in the 64-bit style. Let's unmangle them. And now we can see um, the fact that the exported uh, sim name of the symbol with C++ mangling actually allows for overloads, so for functions which are two functions exported from the same DLL with the exact same function name but with different uh, signature, with different arguments. There's bad cast, char const pointer const pointer, and bad cast char const pointer const reference. Then there's also um, class names. This is a destructor. This is a constructor, a sitor. This is a detour. You can see that it's a C++ exported symbol when you have the icon C++. The icon C says that it's either written in the C programming language and exported as is, or written in some other programming language and then doing the equivalent of external C before the symbol is exported from the DLL.
So there's call lock, seal, math functions, time functions, reading from the keyboard, from standard input, printing, the symbols with W, I'll use WHRT, not char for the type of a character, one character. C++ style um, exceptions. Exception destructor. Exit function, the most vital function ever. Math functions, file um, functions, the f close, f gets, f open. Okay, some of the symbols, some of the exported functions have another variant that's safer such as this, there's the standard F open that's required by the C89 standard, whereas F open underscore S is a more safe overload of this function and might be standardized or just a Microsoft uh, Visual C++ extension. fprintf and fprintf underscore s. Okay, there's free, the function in C programming language that deallocates contiguous chunks of, of uh, memory. File reopen, file scan, file stat, this tells you if a file exists, for instance. GMT time, conversion integer to a char. If uh, the given string is an integer or an alphabet A to Z, if is lowercase, etc. So most of the C standard libraries for the various versions of the C programming language are available when you install a C++ toolchain from Microsoft Visual C++. Some of these are available from msvcrt.dll and there's a msvcrt.dll which is part of the Windows operating system inside of C colon backslash Windows backslash system32. There's also versions which are specific for the version of um, Microsoft Visual C++ compiler and integrated development environment. These functions in fact are just required by the C programming language, but then they call functions from the Win32 API. You know, for instance, fopen actually calls the Win32 API function create file. If, if you're going to see the implementation of these functions, the C standard library functions inside of Microsoft Visual C++, you will see that most of the body of the functions is actually just calls to the Win32 API functions.
the Win32 API functions usually use Pascal casing, so create file is uppercase C, uppercase F, whereas the C standard library functions are all lowercase, F open with all lowercase. Okay, then on Microsoft Windows, there's three types of uh, of uh, storing a uh, text in uh, bytes. There's uh, the one byte style, there's multi byte style and there's two byte style. So the one byte style is also called ASCII or um, It's not actually one bit, it's actually seven bits, not one byte, but seven bits. The two byte one is uh, the window style UTF-16 Little Endian or UCS2, whereas where each character that's supported by the operating system can be stored as just two bytes. And then there's MB which is multi-byte, which in order to store it as bytes, so you take the text and you want to store it as bytes, or you take the what's stored as bytes and you want to create a text out of it, you will need to know the code page that was used for doing this conversion. Some of these Microsoft multi-byte code pages are 932 for Japanese Shift uh, JIS, 936 for Chinese Simplified, so that's Beijing Chinese GBK, 950 for traditional Chinese Big Five. That's Taiwan and Hong Kong. So this is the block of functions with um, names started with MB or MBC or MBCS. What else? Functions for creating directories or memory copy, so copy from one byte buffer to the other. Operator new, C++. Power, math, print, Put writes characters to the console, to the standard output. Random numbers, delete directories, read from standard input. The sleep milliseconds. Math. Okay. And MFC, this um, C++ toolkit. Let's see what are the symbols that are exported from here. None have names. That's interesting. These are the functions that are needed in order to register a DLL as containing COM objects. And then the COM machinery knows how to open this, to load this DLL in memory and to get to the uh, type lib, which is the metadata about the 
types which are exported from this DLL and then to get to a type and instantiate it and get to its methods, etc. User32 Menus Move Windows uh, Message Pump Message Pump uppercasing files but with uh, win32 API functions not with uh, C standard language functions C language standard library functions child windows the um, cmd.exe console clipboard The accelerators, which are these things. This thing, the underscore that appears when you press the Alt key once. Pop up menus. And DDE is the communication mechanism, which is okay, what else? The detours for various Win30, Windows GUI resources, cursors, icons, menus, windows, This is the window manager, the dynamic window manager. Scroll bars. Searching for windows. So in windows, you can ask the shell, hey, how many windows exist in that are potentially visible by the user, by the currently logged on user. And then you can select one of those based on the various properties of the window. Alt tab, which is this thing. Class info for Windows, class name for Windows, more clipboard, icons, keyboard, layout. Finding something, a scroll bar, a status bar, a submenu, title bar info, the rectangle of the window, which means X, Y with height, a tuple with four items, the title of a window or the text of a Windows cons Windows uh, control, a GUI control. Is char alpha, similar to the functions that we saw previously in the C programming language standard library. This probably receives a HWND which is the standard Windows type 
that's used to identify graphical user interface controls. Bitmaps and icons. Bitmaps cannot be transparent. Icons can have more than one size inside. And uh, bit depth. A message box simple function that shows a pop up a um, model dialog the message loop the main message loop post message send message clipboard send message from the message pump focus chain Show window unhides a GUI control. Sends the message SW show underscore show. Windows help with a win help format. Okay, this one we saw previously for primitives for painting, including using direct uh, 3D, direct, direct X. Many of the functions exported by gdi32.dll have the names starting with uppercase g and lowercase di okay kernel 32 very basic operating system functions Additional directory where to search DLLs from. Uh, CMD.x star console. Beep, which exercises the PC beeper on your motherboard. Named pipes, which is an IPC interprocess communication mechanism on Windows with uh, if you have a string, that's the name of the pipe, and then you can connect to processes through the that pipe. TP thread pool string manipulation functions fibers fiber fiber file copy Create directory. 
Windows Events, which is another IPC mechanism. Fibers, more fibers, which are a form of multi-threading. Create file op opens or creates a file. Mapped, mapped files, the W and the A versions with uh, WHRT or 7-bit char type. Microsoft has um, many types of uh, links between files. There's hard links, there's sim links, there's um, junctions. Maybe I'm missing something. So create hard link. Mail slots, probably another IPC mechanism. Mutex, another IPC mechanism. Synchronization, primitive. Named pipe. Um, starts a sub process as a different user than the user of the current process. Create process, probably the most central function in. Win32 API creates sub processes, semaphore IPC, synchronization primitive, symbolic link. Previously, there were hard links, more thread pooling, tool help 32 snapshot takes as much information as possible about the process and about a um, portable executable file so DLL or exe um, debug silver support atoms are um, I don't know, maybe Atomics, Fiber, File uh, System Management Deleting Files, Mount Points, Mount Table, Um, also on Linux in glibc you have uh, DNS resolve wing critical sections synchronization primitive uh, international localization calendars Internationalization. Exit process. Uh, don't kill threads. you should uh, finish doing what you're doing in the thread and then the thread will join correctly. Don't just randomly kill your thread in the middle of doing something. Mm. Environment variables. This uh, expands environment variables that contains other environment variables inside. For instance, the environment variable path, there's two versions of it. There's the system 
So per computer path environment variable and per my user, the user that's currently logged into the graphical user interface path environment variable. This thing per you, my user, I only have two directories. Per machine, I have six directories. And inside of these directories, there's other environment variables. So when you're getting the path, you don't really want to get a list of things that already they contain other environment variables. You want this final list as it's shown in here. So C column backslash windows backslash system 32 semicolon and then C column backslash windows not percent system root percent backslash system 32 percent system root percent. Okay, so that's expand environment strings w. You should never use the functions that which end in a, always go with the functions that end in w. Does not matter in which programming language you work, does not matter what's the type of string that you're using regularly in this programming language. Hopefully it's at least UTF-8. But then when you're interfacing with uh, the win32 API, that is where you should have classes that just wrap the win32 API and uh, provide idiomatic for your programming language methods, functions, which will convert between the idiomatic string type that you're using in your programming language and what the functions that end in W from the Win32 API require, which is an array of zero terminated W char T, which is two bytes. Okay, console command history. That's in cmd.exe when you press the up arrow or there's a pop up menu. Finding files on the system, there's find first file w and find next file w. This is probably for resources inside the ADLL or inside of an access or inside of a portable executable file. Format message is for print and also for getting string from um, resources and um, replacing the placeholders with actual values. Removing a DLL from um, the current process. I'm not sure if this thing actually works. I have never done it. Console cmd.exe. Get current directory pwd in Linux. Get current process ID, the PID process ID of the currently running process. There's also a thread ID. Disk free space W does what it suggests it does. Environment variable. File size. C time and M time for files. 
get last error uh, central function exported from the Win32 API. Some Win32 API functions. When they encounter an error, return a boolean, for instance, to say that a failure has occurred. But then a very detailed er uh, error code is made available if you immediately, after calling the function that fails, if that returns boolean false, you immediately call the function get last error. So get last error reads from a uh, shared global area in memory the actual error that happened when the previously called Win32 API function has encountered. Logical processor information, this is for CPU threads, for, for the hardware inside of the CPU. Modules, this is for DLLs and executable files instead, inside of a um, process or for portable executable files. More named pipes. NUMA is if you have uh, different types of uh, threads inside of your CPU. For instance, you might have uh, performance cores and energy efficient cores, or if you have more than one CPU socket. Numa. Tape, the ancient uh, magnetic tape storage. Threading. Global alloc and global free, a pair of functions that allocate memory, and global realloc, heap alloc, heap free, heap realloc, a pair of functions that allocate memory differently than global alloc. Critical sections which are a primitive for uh, synchronization. I have never seen the functions with K32. Load library W loads a, another portable executable file into the current process, or if the portable executable file has already been loaded, it uh, I don't know, increments the ref count and then returns. Local alloc, local free, local realloc, another way of allocating memory. LZ is probably compressed, limp LZ. Finding portable executable files inside of the current process that are loaded in the current process, module 32 first W and module 32 next W. Move file renames. There's many 
Win32 API functions have a version like this move file and then an extended version of that API move file X. So this is actually also a pair. And there's also sometimes another element move file with progress W. Sometimes one of these functions is uh, synchronous and the other one is async and cancelable with notification when the um, backgrounded operation finishes. Mutexes, threads, listing processes, process32 first W and process32 next W. The registry functions with a name starting with uppercase R and then EG reg until here, deleting directories, removing, making it such a DLL, a directory that contains DLLs that has been added to the search path for the current process is now removed. RTL, runtime library. Setting the computer name. More cmd.exe. Set DLL directory, set environment variable. We saw most of these functions with getters and now these are the setters. So get environment variable W, set environment variable W. Terminal server. Listing um, threads in the current process. Thread local storage, a lock and free. Version info block. The version info block is this thing. This thing, which is missing here. So, file description, file version, product version, product name, copyright, original file name. This is the in version info block. Another pair of memory allocation, virtual alloc, virtual free. Um, very important Win32 API function, wait for multiple objects X. Some of the Windows kernel objects can be waited on. on such as uh, a um, Windows event, a Windows named pipe, so IPC communication channels and uh, synchronization primitives. And you provide to this function a list of the objects that and when one of these is signaled, the function will return and will say 
out of this array, this object is now in the signaled state. Wait for multiple objects X. Which has a simplification which is wait for multiple objects and another simplification which is wait for single object. This doesn't, this function receives just a single object that you want to wait on, whereas this expects a list. Windows error reporting running 32-bit processes on a 64-bit Windows operating system WO64 more cmd.exe zombify and these with WTS are Windows terminal services so functions related to remote desktop protocol okay, adva p32 what does it do abort system shutdown so when you start a process shutdown which goes like what Like this, you go shut down slash s slash t1, for instance, to shut down the computer in less than one second. If you're really, really fast, then you can call this function, which will abort the system shutdown. Okay, what else? ACE, this is for... Uh, um, mandatory access control ACLs access control lists which you can put on Windows objects such as on directories and files AC AC and more AC then there's security adjust token privileges More Windows security, trustees, um, SIDs, security identifier, uh, SCM, Windows Service Control Manager, these four, event, Windows event logs, more SCM, Windows Services, more security, 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 create process as user W, start so process with a different user, Service Control Manager. I'm not sure what these functions with cred do. No, either this with crypt. Lookup function in external help. Let's see what it does. the search URL is broken. Seed, SID, more security, trustees, security and more security. Trustee.
security impersonate tokens ACR security SID security initiate system shutdown W tells the computer to start in number of seconds to stop or to hibernate log on as a different user windows users and groups lookup security descriptor lsa more security event log windows event log more sem service control manager then there's uh, perf counters performance counters registry more windows registry functions including connecting to remote registry using the smb protocol to another computer more advanced um, registry functions so transacted or x SEM Remote Registry Revert to self after your your thread or your process is impersonated as a different token, you revert to the original token that you had. So security mechanism per thread or per process. ACL. File security. A named um, there are other files on windows that you cannot see by just uh, listing whatever is under c column backslash many unexpected things are actually files in windows similar to how everything is a file is the unix ideal SCM a cryptography WMI this is Windows management instrumentation this is um, a set of um, what is it is WQL which is kind of like a SQL programming language domain specific for querying that you can run on the current machine on or on a different machine so first you connect to the WMI server from another machine if you want for instance and then you run WQL queries there so the queries look like uh, from W3 to processes get all or something which lists all of the processes that exist on your computer or you can get the I know the version of the BIOS or the 
computer name, etc. Using simple strings which contain the domain specific language WQL queries. These things, WMI query. Okay. Then we have help, this um, context help. It will show the, it will open the depends.x help file, which talks about the different elements of the graphical user interface or so tool views in our case, tool windows. So this one is module dependency tree view, this rectangle. This is parent import function list view, this rectangle. This is export function list view, this rectangle. This is the module list view, this rectangle. And this is the log view. You can clean the log either by right clicking clear log window or from the main menu. In the edit menu, clear log window. Okay, so it's interesting to read the or comprehend the entirety of um, the dependency walker 2.2 help file. If you're a C++ Windows programmer. And not only because you're going to be able to help debug very complicated low-level DLL and XA interaction issues. Okay, let's now look at the other graphical user interface executable that helps us with seeing which DLRs are required by an exe file, which is dependencies.exe. Let's see how we install that. Download here. So it's actually using GitHub releases. So 2021. And the last git commit is three years ago. Unfortunately, there's just one main developer in this of this git repository. Okay. Let's see what it says. How do we install this thing? It says that a Visual C++ redistributable is needed in order to run properly. Well, we'll see. Maybe we can do without. Okay, so it has downloaded completely. The file is um, dependencies x64 release zip. There's a ton of API sets and um, .NET uh, DLR supportable executable files. There's Mono, Cecil 1, 2, and 3. There's a command line executable dependencies.exe and dependencies GUI.exe. Okay, so it uh, somehow started. That's good. Let's look at the exact same thing that we looked before, which is depends.exe. First of all, it loaded instantly. Not, I did not have to wait two minutes. The tree view is as complicated with all of those API sets. But in this case, it shows that the API set MS 
win event in controller is just uh, presenting a subset of the seghost.dll in 32 API DLL. And Win Security Base is just a subset of kernel base 32. And Processes and Threads is just a subset of kernel 32 DLL. And there's uh, multiple versions of these. There's L1 minus 1 minus 0 and L1 minus 1 minus 1. So this executable depends.exe imports open process from the newer API set and the rest from the older API set. Okay, let's collapse everything. Let's look at shell 32. Okay, so things look pretty similar, the same uh, layout. I'm not sure where the error tool view is. Okay, it shows full paths by default. You can toggle by right clicking full paths or view in the dependencies main menu view and then full paths f9 okay it undecorates c plus exported functions by default let's look at uh, M mfc 42 sold by function there's nothing to see in here because the functions do not have names. Okay. MSVCRT. From what I see, depends.exe only imports C symbols, not C++ symbols. Right click scroll here works, that's a good thing. The sorting is different, it actually sorts alphabetically, whereas in dependency viewer underscore G was near to just G without an under underscore. So it takes a while to scroll past the functions that start with underscore. Okay. Ups, across are uh, math functions. And here is the first C++ symbol with a V table, correct icon correct uh, C++ unmangling, so undecorate C++ functions works correctly. And here is bad cast with its overloads for the constructor. We can this time also see the calling convention and uh, visibility, so visibility calling convention um, class name, member name, and then signature with of parameters and the return type.
Die Mangler Microsoft. Okay, there's no errors here, so there's nothing to actually to report. Let's see if uh, depends.exe depends on its own DLL. There's a depends.dll in here. Does it depend on it or not? I'm not sure, let's rename it. File, how do we refresh? F5, doesn't show any errors. Okay, let's find another executable and let's um, have an error. For instance, this one. There's tab support. So you still have depends, but you also have kit. Okay, so let's rename one of the files in here such that Kate fails to load correctly. And we'll see how errors are reporting, reported in uh, dependencies.exe. So let's go with this guy, Kate private. View module in PE viewer. Could not be found. Module in separate application. Okay, I expected there to be a open this file in the file manager. So in this directory, there is a Kate private, this guy. Let's rename it. Let's go refresh. Doesn't work. Okay, so refresh did not work for me. So it says there's a problem, a um, DLL that, so k.access declares that when k.access is loaded into memory, it will also require k.private.dll to be loaded in memory and the following functions should be that are exported by kitprivate.dll should be imported into the newly created process k.exe. Okay, we can see in here the imported functions that k.exe expects to be available in kitprivate.dll. So there's C symbols. The icon is wrong, should be C++, not C. So there's visibility and uh, type name and member name and signature and calling convention and if it's virtual or not. And we can see it also in here, in the module list, that um, it's missing. Okay, this is just the simplest uh, of the possible ways of loading a DLL inside of an executable, where at compile time, at link time, in the executable you declare that the following DLLs will be required and the following symbols will be imported from these DLLs. The next way of loading a DLL is using load library get proc address. The dynamic way, the way of loading at runtime, but for that you will need to actually run the application and somebody needs to hook these uh, 
win32 API functions, load library and get proc address. And whenever they are called, the name of the loaded DLL will need to be made available to the application. From what I see, dependencies does not have such a system, but uh, depends does have such a system. And that system is, uh, where are you? Let's open depends.exe again. So I have started dependency walker depends.exe. I have loaded itself inside, so depends.exe. And now we have this uh, main menu item, profile, start profiling F7, which gives different arguments. But uh, the executable is already selected, so depends on text. The correct directory is there. And if I want to specify command line arguments, which I do not, so let's let dependency walker start in graphical user interface mode uh, via command line parameters it can specify to be a command line executable and not show the main graphical user interface but we do not want to do that so just okay so we did a ton of activity it has uh, refreshed the Preview this thing, the module dependency tree view as DLLs were loaded inside of the executable. And we also have detailed logs with which DLL has been loaded and uh, successfully by depends on text. So it probably hooks modules, I'm guessing, for the dynamic linking for the functions load library and get proc address. DLL process attach. Injected depends dot dll so depends dot dll is not actually a dll on which depends dot exit depends <laughs> but uh, it's a uh, dll that's extracted from depends dot exe when needed put into the same directory and then this dll is injected inside of the running processes So now depends.exe does depend on depends.dll, which we can see. Can we see this thing? It's showing additional things that we did not see before. So previously we only had Advapi kernel 32, GDI 32, user 32, MFC 42, MS, VCR, COM, DLG, COM, CTL, and Shell 32. We now additionally also have um, an active X, which is a graphical user interface com in process DLL with extension OCX, HHCTRL, which is uh, the uh, active X for Windows Microsoft help, HHC help style, so this thing. And then we have image HLP and NTDLL. 
which are loaded dynamically, I'm guessing. So we can see the get proc address is here. So the first one is get proc address, process ID to session ID from comctl32. So comctl32, which is this guy, um, tried to open kernel32.dll, so we did load library kernel32.dll, was already loaded in the memory, so it incremented the um, reference count to two for one, from one, and then went get proc address process ID to session ID. If this thing fails, that's not a problem. Maybe the operating system is too old and uh, it will do something else, comctl32. If the function exists, it will use it. Okay, then we have more comctl32 action. It uh, load the library imm32.dls successfully. Again, maybe this thing does not exist on Windows 2000 or something. And then it um, loaded all of the exported functions that were needed from inside imm32.dll using get proc address. So all of these functions with uh, prefix imm and then something. What else? Load library, loading the um, HTML help ActiveX. The first time that the hhctrl.ocx is loaded into the process, reference count one, and then does get proc address and does not specify the name of a function but instead it specifies the I'm not sure what this thing is maybe it's the ordinal let's actually see hhctrl and then e this thing. HTML help A with ordinal E in hexadecimal or 14 in uh, base 10. So HTML help A. Okay. Again you can load functions from a DLL either by specifying the ordinal, so 14, or specifying the name HTML help A. What other things are interesting? Get proc address, add VAPI32, create well known seed from hhctrl.ocx, check token membership. These things did exist in Windows 2000 and probably also in Windows NT4, but maybe did not exist on Windows 98 second edition on, or on Windows 2000. Usually you do get proc address like that. If you can run on different types of operating systems and one type has the function, the Win32 API function and the, another type of Windows operating systems does not have the Win32 API function. Okay, depends what exit then goes um, load library kernel32.dll and then get proc address 
create ACT, activate ACT, deactivate, and get product info. Load library image help. Undecorate symbol name, which is image help. This guy. So a win32 API DLL. And it's using the standard way of demangling C++ exports, exported functions that exit from a DLL. Great. There's a Microsoft provided function that unmangles C++ symbols, named undecorate symbol name in the DLL image help dot DLL. Image being uh, portable executable. So DLLs, OCX, X, etc. Get proc address anti DLL dot DLL, this guy with these items anti close, anti open, and anti query. And that's it. Dependency Walker depends on Texa and all of its DLLs that it depends on have only called get proc address you know, 20 times. So a really small amount of times. Here for IMM, here for process ID to session ID. Here for um, advap 32 here for ACT context, and then here for NT. That's it. And then we have two additional graphical user interface tools from the sysinternal suit that can help us determine which um, DLLs are loaded into an executable at the current moment, which is Process Explorer and uh, Procmon, the Process Monitor. Let's see these two in action. So, this internal suit. It's an executable, it's a um, archive. This guy, download sysinternal suit, sysinternal suit.zip. C column backslash 10 backslash bin, great. 50 megabytes in size. Let's extract it here. Okay. So the two executables are Procmon. Where are you? Procmon.exe. This is EULA. It needs to be elevated as, as an administrator. It monitors from all of the processes that are running currently the re, re, Windows Registry open, Windows Registry read, Windows Registry write, Windows Registry delete, close. We don't want any Windows Registry actions to be monitored. Then we have network activity, TCP, socket transfers, we do not want that. Um, we just want the DLLs. How do we do that? where it says load library. We can see the process 
for instance, explorer.exe, reading the file taskbar.dll. Let's uh, close dependency walker. Clean the capture. Right now we are capturing events and we want to look at the process dependency walker and see what DLLs it loads and when it loads those. Okay, so we have the executable in here. Depends on text. We say we only want to capture events from this process. So right click on depends.exe and say include depends.exe. So we have the event load image. We also have event um, map file. So I'm guessing the event load image is enough for our needs. So go right click on uh, load image and include. Let's look at the current filter. This button in the toolbar filter control aisle. In here we have the default filters that um, the executable process monitor procmon.exe comes with. So these from event class is network exclude until process name is procmon.exe exclude. These were either the default ones or we have just excluded them by clicking on the main toolbar, Windows Registry, Networking, and this thing. So Registry, Network, and Profiling. And then additionally, we said that we only care about events generated for the product and by the process depends on Texa. And in there, we only want to look at the events of uh, type load image. Okay, so we have a timestamp which we can sort by, it's already sorted, and we can see the order in which portable executable files have been loaded. The first of all, of course, is the exe file, which is also a portable executable file. We know it's a portable executable by doing viewing the file with a hex editor, and we can see that it starts with MZ, and then it also contains this um, standard text, this program cannot be run in DOS mode. Okay, the same thing for DLLs, depends on DLL, starts with uppercase M, uppercase Z, and then this program cannot be run in DOS mode. Okay, the process is still running. Process monitor is still collecting events, but then it's filtering all of those events. So it collected 332,000 events. Everything's filtered out except 41 filters. Let's see if the OCX has loaded for HTML help. Extension OCX in here, hhctrl.ocx. Okay, is in here the DLL from the same directory loaded? This uh, depends DLL. No, it's not because there's only one file from the directory of depends.exe, which means that. If in dependency walker we're going to load a 
executable and then press uh, F7 start profiling. It will also extract from the resources of dependency walker the DLL depends.dll, put it in the same directory and then hook load this DLL inside of the process that uh, that was started by dependency walker when we pressed F7 pro start profiling. Okay, let's stop capturing events because these events, I guess, eat a ton of uh, random access memory. Let's see how much. So it's named Procmon. Only 13, uh, 14 megabytes. That's not much. Okay, let's look at the other executable from this internal suit that's suitable for seeing which DLLs are, part, are loaded when an executable is started as a process. So that's procexp.exe process explorer. EULA. This is the list of processes that are currently running on my computer. It's presented as a tree. You can click on processes, on process uh, header. It will present it as a list sorted alphabetically, as a list sorted uh, descending alphabetically, or as a tree. We can see that um, in Windows, similar to Unix, there's a tree of processes where you can see that procmon64.exe was started by procmon.exe and procx64 was started by procx.exe. Okay, so this is dependency walker depends.exe. Let's look at the DLS that are currently loaded inside of this process. How do we do that? We want to show the DLLs. View lower pane view DLLs. Okay, so in the lower pane view, which is uh, high hidden by default, you can show it either by clicking in the main toolbar of uh, Process Explorer on the icon show hide lower pane, or you can go view show lower pane, view lower pane, and then select something from here. There's three tabs and we're interested in the tab uh, DLLs. Okay, so let's see if uh, the list is similar. Let's uh, sort by path. We cannot, we want to sort by name. Okay, so ADV API. B crypt primitives. What is that thing? This guy. NLS. I'm not sure what this thing is. Language packs or something. Combase dot DLL this guy, comctl, we know this is in here, comctl32, this long one, comdlg, this guy, core messaging, this guy, core UI components, script base, this guy, depends.exe, window, desktop window manager, api.dll, uh, this guy, gdi32, gdi32 full, one, two, 
HHCTRLOCX, this guy, image help DLL IMM32, image help and IMM32, kernel app core kernel 32 kernel base, one, two, kernel app core DLL. And we have two different comctl32s loaded in the same process. Or not. The path seems to be the same. This way, kernel app core dot dll. More NLS files. MFC forty two. And. Um, Translation package for English US, MSCTF, MSLS, these guys, MSVCP win, MSVCRT is this guy, this one, I'm not sure where it is. NTDLL, this guy, OLE, which is for COM, these two guys, reach edit, this is um, a reach RTF uh, GUI control viewer, reach text format, two of them. RPC remote procedure call runtime four. Where is that? This guy. Sec host. This guy. SH core. This guy. Shell thirty two. This guy. Shell Windows API lightweight utility. Shell lightweight API. This guy. Uh, NLS that. So it doesn't do load image on non portable executable files, which NLS these language packs probably are not. Text input framework. This guy, text shaping, UCRT base, this guy, user32 and it's MUI, this guy, USP, here, UX theme, I don't see it here. Win32U. This guy. And win types, the last one, here. So the list is pretty similar. The DLS that are not actually DLS or not actually loaded with load library are loaded with, I know, just to load the resources or the version info block or something from it, not. Uh, C or C++ symbols are not shown uh, in a block monitor, but are shown in um, the Process Explorer DLLs. Let's see how we can make it show the full path of DLLs.
just a second. I guess that there's a um, setting in here. It was here the whole time, so it's um, the fourth column named path. Okay, and then Process Explorer also has this handy functionality where you can find which process this one is, like this. It says that it depends .exe. So this button on the toolbar, find windows is pros. So you give it a process and it uh, highlights in the Process Explorer tree view the correct process. And then there's a searcher if you know parts of the name of the DLL, you can find out in which process that DLL has been loaded. EW.DLL. And then you can select in here the correct process and it will be highlighted in the Process Explorer tree view of processes. So we have in here depends on text this guy. It has selected it correctly. We can go double click. Oh, close. There's also the properties of the process. When you can where you can see interesting important information such as the directory where the process is currently changed directory into. Strings are inside of the portable executable file depends.exe. Here are some of the strings that uh, are probably encoded in 7-bit and can be easily visible if we look with the hex editor inside. Like this. You can see this program cannot be run in DOS mode in here. Okay, there's HHCTRL OCX. which is also available probably here in this list. Okay, and that's that would be everything that you need in order to debug issues where a executable will not launch because some DLL is missing. Maybe you don't have the correct Microsoft Visual C++ runtime installed or the correct uh, .NET Framework version installed, or uh, maybe you have just downloaded a zip file containing parts of the files needed for the executable to run, and you'll need to download the second zip archive. So this is it, how to use dependency walker depends.exe, how to use dependencies.exe, how to use process monitor and process explorer in order to find out exactly what DLLs are loaded inside of a process and what other DLLs are needed but could not be loaded correctly. Thank you.